why the service providers are so excited about this is you start to look at how do they efficiently launch new services, mm -hmm. but then if you start to look at how do I efficiently run that network, operate that network, these are the types of tools, these are the types of capabilities that are going to allow them to get very efficient in, in operating those networks and ultimately reduce the cost of operating those networks and they can you know, concentrate their time and their dollars on things that, where they're going to get a better return on their investment. From hardware-based access to cloud applications, the way that service providers are delivering bandwidth is changing. I spoke with Shane Eleniak at Calix Networks to talk about how service providers are taking big data out of the access network and providing new services. Okay, Shane, the first question I have is about the collapsed central office. It sounds bad, but it's actually really good. It's actually really <laughs> good. So, you know, we've had, a, you know, we've talked a little bit about it with some of our announcements, the Verizon announcement, for example. But, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately what people are looking at is what are all the functions in a central office? Access, aggregation, edge routing, subscriber management. How do I simplify that workflow? And really looking at where systems and where software platforms are today, I can collapse all of those capabilities into one platform. And you know, that was really the vision behind our E9. What we, um, you know, really it ties into this idea of an intelligent edge network, one network. There's a lot of different terminology for it, mm -hmm. but it's ultimately people going, I can take everything from the subscriber all the way up to that service edge and do all of those functions in software with the same system. And for the operator, it's not just about um, an efficiency play, you know, just simply the act of reducing their, you know, uh, hardware footprint in their network. Um, what, are, what are some of the other benefits that they get? Yeah, it was really the, the OPEX focus. So mm -hmm. for them, it was looking at what are the workflows, how do I simplify the workflow? So can I take something that would be a 26-step, you know, method and procedure to turn up this service, and collapse it into five or six different steps. And it really becomes, you know, I've got the access system, I've got the aggregation, I've got the edge router. I don't have to take all those pieces and try and stitch them together through outward facing interfaces like Ethernet, for example. I can now treat that as all software functions. And what is the optimum set of functions that I really need to have? Once I simplify it, then I can start to look at automating it, right? And on the subscriber side of that equation, does that help push services or bandwidth or both deeper into the network to sort of enable um, a, a broader set of services for subscribers? Yeah, you know, there's, if that's the horizontal collapse we're seeing, we're also seeing a kind of an equivalent vertical collapse. People are looking at it as a one network going, can I use technologies like NGPON2? Can I put residential and business and, and sell backhaul type of services, 5G type of services? on the same network, now I can launch all of my services, I can run that on a, say, on my, you know, a single network and really start to enforce all of those different SLAs so I can have very different services, a broad set of services, but really just manage one single network. Uh, Calix is also uh, innovating in the cloud and providing applications, uh, cloud applications. Yeah, so you know what we see is really kind of two pieces to that, right? If, if AXOS is really the key software platform at the system level for it, you then start to look at cloud infrastructure. And what can I do from a management perspective, from a connector perspective? Can I start to get to simplified workflows, templated workflows, automation? And how does that then start to fit into role-based clouds? You know, one of the things we announced was what we were doing with marketing cloud and support cloud. Mm -hmm. And really the idea is, okay, there are different roles in the network. Um, in the case of marketing, I'm really looking more at what ifs. You know, where can I go, where do I spend my next marketing dollar to get the most success as an operator? On the customer support side of it, it's more where are the inefficiencies, where are the misalignments, do I have a real good understanding of kind of the history for that customer, but also what are the issues that they're seeing, and I can, can I start to correlate that and make that obvious to the, to the service provider and how best to fix it. And does the cloud application side, how, how does the, you know, Calix has also talked a lot about in, intent-based networking, you know, when you get this sort of intelligent edge or... Yeah, or, or yeah. You, you start to see kind of two pieces to it, right? You start to see kind of the evolution from traditional management to intent-based intent adaptive networking, right? Okay. So can we have a network that's smart enough to look at what was I trying to do? What was the intent? Right. And then where are the misalignments? 
And then can I leverage cloud-based systems, cloud-based infrastructure, as well as smart software platforms to be able to fix those misalignments? Can I find the diagnostics? Can I find the misalignment? Can I fix the misalignment? And ultimately, as we start to look at machine learning and artificial intelligence, it becomes, can we get to a network that's smart enough to fix itself? Okay. You know, and, th and that's why it's so much focus, right? If you look at workflows to automation, if you start to look at adaptive networking is really that next step. If I simplify the workflow, if I get the right workflow, if I automate it, mm -hmm. and I can then start to put intelligence in to say, well, if I got misalignments, if I've got areas where this really isn't aligned with what I'm trying to do, my intent, what's the service I'm trying to do, what's the SLA I'm trying to enforce, I can then start to identify those misalignments and then ultimately fix them. And that requires, you know, all throughout, very little operator inter intervention uh, along yeah, the way. Yeah, and that's really why the service providers are so excited about this, is you start to look at how do they efficiently launch new services. DevOps mm -hmm. is obviously a big part of that. Mm -hmm. But then if you start to look at how do I efficiently run that network, operate that network, these are the types of tools, these are the types of capabilities that are going to allow them to get very efficient in, in operating those networks and ultimately reduce the cost of operating those networks and they can you know, concentrate their time and their dollars on things that, where they're going to get a better return on their investment. It's also incredibly exciting from the user point of view, whether it's a business or a residence, because they have this um, network that's suddenly uh, aware of what they might be doing based on a few actions or based on his. Uh, historical yeah, and the exciting setting. part for me is you s if you start to look at it, you start to look at how can you make it better for them? Where are the misalignments? You know, as you start to look at what we're doing on the smart home side of it, as you start to look at what we're doing on the analytics side of it, it's starting to identify and, and understand what's going on in the network, what's going on at the premises, having those deep analytics, because then you can start to figure out how do I make the network more efficient, whether that's from a planning or operations perspective, or how do I make it better for the customer? And whether that's from a marketing perspective or whether that's putting intelligence into the EXOS systems to be able to go, you just bought a brand new device from Amazon. How do you make that fit into their smart home or into their Wi-Fi network, into their mesh? How do you make it optimum so they get the experience that they think they, that, they're, that they're expecting? Right, right that, that they're expecting. That's the key thing is that it's, a, it's about uh, customer expectations. At the end of it, service providers are sort of graded on that, you know, yeah. whether, whether they want to be or not. Yeah, you know, we, we see a real evolution. You know, everything at one point, you know, 20 years ago, it was really kind of network back into the customer, right? right you know, we yeah. built networks, we started in the core, we did the edge, we got into the customer. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about customer experience. Mm -hmm. What's the customer experience? How do I give my customers a better experience? Um, and I think where we're at now as an industry is, how can I start to understand what experience are they really getting? Are they happy? Where are my misalignments, right? And how can I make them happier? How can I give them a better experience? In the, in the process of that, so telemetry comes into play here. You've mm -hmm. got to extract that data from the network. It can't be a, a manual process, and it also can't be a, a really deliberate process. It has to be very, um, very much based on whatever is happening in the network, but also whatever the network resources are. How has Calix, um, you know, taken a, a kind of a leadership position in that? Yeah, space? you know, we kind of stepped back and said there's really three parts to it, and you know, we're really leveraging our three software platforms to do it. There's a piece that's really I've got to understand what's going on at the premises. And that's really a, a key part of what we're doing with the XOS is, you know, mm -hmm. I've got to understand the premises and whether that's a home, whether that's a business, I've got to really try to understand what's going on there. The second part of it for us was to say, okay, I've got to understand the network. We've got to get more granular, we've got to get richer, but I also want to be able to correlate it and say, that's the service, that's the subscriber, that's the user all the way throughout the network, how do I start to get rich analytics out of that, you know, instrument the network itself? And then how do I, you know, how do I leverage cloud scale infrastructure? You know, if you look at a Twitter or you look at a, a Facebook, you know, what a Netflix, what we've, you know, really gotten as an industry is web scale platforms. Right. And that's really what we're doing with our Calix cloud platforms is recognizing kind of two things. One, I can take the same types of data and correlate it and it's meaningful in different ways for different users. Mm -hmm. So it really has to be role-based. Okay. A marketing person is looking at data differently than a customer support person, different than a planning person. Right. We may be pulling the same information out of the network, mm -hmm. but what's meaningful th for them? How do I correlate it? And then what's the insights are all different. So for us, it was recognizing, I've got to present it in a way that makes sense for that user. 
The second part of it then was, I really, really need rich analytics, and I need them to be real time, and I've got to get very granular in the analytics. So we can leverage what's going on in the industry, what Google has brought us, what Facebook has brought us, what's come back into Apache and organizations like that to build web scale platforms that make sense for service providers so that now we can start to do deep analytics, we can start to bring in machine learning and technologies like that. But ultimately, we can collect very rich real-time data on what's going on in the network, do it in more of a pub-sub type of model, and start to really understand and under, you know, kind of the underlying network, but the underlying customer experience, and are, you know, where is the opportunities, and then present that in a way that makes sense for each one of those roles. The other thing that's interesting is Calix's evolution, you know, um, into more of a software company sure. and where, um, where that's going. Um, maybe you could talk just really broadly about how Calyx has changed as a company Absolutely. and then what we can look forward to in the, in the future. You know, so Calyx is always wanting to be a leader on the access network. So our focus is access. You know, we think that's the perfect place to be in the network. You touch, you know, the, a key part of the service provider network and you touch the subscriber. So you're between the customer and his data and his content that, you know, and his applications that are sitting in the cloud. So from us, it's a great place to be. You get to see kind of two very, you know, rapidly changing ecosystems. And more importantly, we think you're in a part of the network where you're going to have the biggest influence on really matching customer experience, right? This is where the service provider really can make differences and make changes and really separate themselves from their competitors. We kind of stepped back a, a number of years ago and said, how are we going to do that? And for us, it really came down to, I need a software platform at the system level, at the network level, AXOS. As we started to kind of move closer and closer to the subscriber, our initial vision was AXOS would ultimately end up in the customer's home. Mm -hmm. When we started to look at it and started to look at kind of the characteristics, what's going on in smart home and smart business, we decided we could take a lot of that but we were going to end up with a different OS. And that was right. what led to EXOS. Okay. And then once we got those two pieces and we started to look at adaptive networking, intent, the evolution of management, telemetry, automation, analytics, it became clear to us that we really needed a web scale cloud infrastructure. And then at the same time, we wanted role-based clouds on top of that. And really leveraging those three software platforms, AXOS, EXOS, and then what we're doing with cloud infrastructure and services, for us is really the, the, you know, the key three pieces. You need all three of them, but we think by investing in all three of those, we've got a winning solution for our customers. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to in the Access Network. It's certainly an exciting place. Thanks so much for having us out today. I Thanks, Phil. It. Really appreciate it.